Hello and welcome to the Church of Toltar. We're going to begin with the doctrine of the Rosicrucians. There's a lot of misinformation out there regarding the Rosicrucians. So I'm just going to take you through a little bit of what they believe. It is crucial for me to share this information, for with this knowledge we can come to a better understanding of what the Toltarian beliefs are. We're going to begin with a little bit of history. The modern interest in the Rosicrucian teachings dates back to the early part of the 17th century, about 1610 to be exact. The mysterious society was severely attacked by the ecclesiastical authorities and others, and was as vigorously defended by those who were interested in the general subject of occultism and the esoteric teachings. There were many counterfeit orders established during the following century but none have been able to show an undoubted connection with the original order. Some of the original teachings have been incorporated in some of the higher degrees of masonry and have served a good purpose therein. The legend concerning the origin of the order, true in some respects, but erroneous in others, was as follows. That a certain Christian Rosenkreutz a German nobleman who had donned the robes of a certain order of monks, had visited India, Persia, and also Arabia, and had returned bringing with him a certain secret doctrine obtained from the sages of those oriental lands. He was said to have established the original Rosicrucian Brotherhood about 1425, its existence not becoming known until nearly 200 years afterward. The true Rosicrucians recognize this legendary tale as being merely a cleverly disguised recital of the real facts, which must be read between the lines, aided by the spectacles of understanding, in order that its real import may be grasped. The present writer does not feel justified in telling in these pages the tale as he understands it, and as it has been transmitted to him by those in authority. In fact, to make the same public, he would be violating a most sacred promise. He is permitted to state that the secret doctrine is a body of esoteric teachings, handed down for ages by wise men deeply versed in the esoteric doctrines and occult lore. This wisdom originally came by way of the Orient, and in fact even today comprises part of the inner teachings of some of the highest Oriental brotherhoods. Its history is but another instance of the truth of the old secret axioms, one of which says that we must look to the east from whence comes all light. For many years little or nothing was permitted to be revealed to the general public concerning the doctrine, but during the past 25 years there has been a greater and still greater freedom in this respect. Until today many important Rosicrucian teachings form a part of nearly all writings and teachings upon the subject of the esotericism in general and of higher metaphysics in particular. Theosophy and the general interest in Oriental philosophies and religions have done much to bring into public notice some of the more elementary points of the secret doctrine. In fact, in the highest writings and teachings of some of the greatest organizations, you may find many half-hidden bits of the Rosicrucian doctrine, cleverly disguised from the unprepared and plainly revealed to the prepared few. Now, who was Christian Rosencruz? I myself have heard many theories from insiders, from him being non-existent to him possibly being Christ or a Germanic relative of Jesus. At the very basis level, as we have heard, Christian Rosencruz learned the teachings of the sages in the East, supposedly in the early 15th century. When he returned, he founded the Fraternity of the Rose Cross with himself as the head of the order. He constructed with proper help a temple called the House of the Holy Spirit. In or around 1604, his body was discovered by authors of the Fama Fraternitati of the Meritorious Order of the Rosy Cross. The tomb or vault lay behind a door with the inscription, I will open in 120 years. Inside it was a seven-sided vault, and in the center stood an altar, 
beneath which they found the body. The tomb contained a chest filled with many mirrors and a copy of a book they described as their greatest treasure beside the Bible. The tomb was apparently built to be a storehouse for ancient knowledge, and on the crypt appeared these words, To me Jesus is everything. This vacuum does not exist. The freedom of the gospel, the true glory of God, a seed implanted in the breast of Jesus. His glorious crypt was found inside the earth, which will bring to mind the alchemical quote, visit the interior parts of the earth. You will find the hidden stone through refinement. A Rosicrucian text states that at age four he was placed in a monastery. When he was still growing, he set out, accompanied by a monk, on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. The monk passed away while they were in Cyprus, and Rosencruz traveled to Damascus, where he acquired legendary medical skill. He then traveled on to Arabia, where he studied under a group of wise men to whom nature was discovered. They taught him Arabic, physics, and math, and they introduced him to a book that contained the so-called secrets of the universe. He began translating this book into Latin, he studied botany and zoology in Egypt. He learned the practical application of magic and studied the Kabbalah. He was equipped to teach the learned of Europe how to order all their studies on those foundations. 